Hello, good afternoon gamers, my name is Maverick4k, and today we're doing something that's quite new on my channel. Uh, for the past two or three weeks, I've been working on kind of a little mini-series based on what my subscribers wanted to see. Um, I put out a poll, and it was 50% between me talking about cheating, and then 50% saying they want to see me talk about trust factor and how it can be boosted so for these past few weeks i've been doing what i can to get some information on it it's good hearing some other opinions when it comes to cheaters but uh if you guys do like this video please go ahead and subscribe go ahead thumbs up tell me that you like this stuff and maybe uh just maybe i'll do it in the future again yeah enjoy so before we even think about addressing trust factor or cheaters in matchmaking games, we first need to understand how Counter-Strike came to be the popular sensation that it is today. On June 19, 1999, the first beta of Counter-Strike was released as a mod for the, for the hit game Half-Life. What was originally seen as a fan-made mod with some simple added mechanics soon turned into a massive phenomenon that at one point, early into the mod's development, had over 100,000 active players or downloads for Half-Life. Even though the content in the beta 1.0 was relatively meager, it was more than enough to show a groundbreaking success. And over the next couple of months in updates and patches, Counter-Strike gradually established itself a foothold in the online gaming community. And to be honest, Counter-Strike was bigger than almost every single multiplayer first-person shooter out there to date, at times beating Quake 3 and even Unreal Tournament. Counter-Strike was developed by a very, very small team of driven individuals like, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, but Min Gooseman Lee and Jess Cliff. And if you guys don't know who Gooseman is, if you've played Dust 2, you know where Goose is. There you go. That's the, that's the connection. This mod gathered so much attention that Valve quickly became involved in its development and at one point even contracting a third-party developer, which some of you may already know, Barking Dog Studios, to assist in the development of Beta 5.0. Sometime later in about November 9th of 2000, the game Counter-Strike made its way to the PC market as a full-fledged original boxed game. Counter-Strike sure has changed over these past almost 20 years or so, but the one thing that Counter-Strike refuses to change is its engine. Now back in the day, Source was groundbreaking. It set itself apart from the competition by being able to load massive areas at once, or at least looked like it could. And this was for you to explore, check out, like Half-Life, that was most of our first real open world experiences for us gamers. Or so you may think. Source loads everything in separate rooms, so it kind of gives you the illusion that everything is being loaded, but in reality, it's not. Source does not like rendering displacements in one large area. But 3 Clicks Philip made a fantastic video about this, describing how Source loads areas and how displacements work in the game. So I'll link his video in the description if you want to go check that out, because I am not a subject matter expert. But before I get too sidetracked, let's talk on the subject why some of you are even here right now. And that is because of the cheating epidemic. Cheating in Counter-Strike was actually not that big of a problem until around August 21st in 2012. And that was in the release of Counter-Strike Global Operation. As the 11th game released on the Source engine, there were already people with cheats in hand, with knowledge of how to tamper with Valve's engine. Hacks built for old games like Half-Life 2 Deathmatch could, you know, with a few minutes of reworking, could perhaps work in Counter-Strike, although Valve says they'll be trivial and easy to detect. Design-wise, the traits that make CSGO a skillful game of angles and accuracy also makes cheats more effective. Weapons are highly lethal in Counter-Strike, so putting those guns in the hands of aimbots makes them even that much more devastating. In Counter-Strike's focus on information and stealth means that knowing the location of your opponent is invaluable, fertile ground for wall hackers. But now I want to go back, let's go back to 2002. Way before Counter-Strike Global Operation was even a thought, Valve came out with a plan to fight these cheaters, these wallers and aimbotters. In early 2002, VACnet was born. It's a smart learning AI program that had the ability to mark player profiles who it deemed was cheating, only to VACban them later on when enough information has been gathered on their profiles and their cheat. 
The way VACnet works is that it links, almost like a social network, your profile to other profiles who have been caught using the same type of cheat. This is easier said than done, but it does work. As much as people like to say it doesn't, it does. In 2019, at the very beginning, so far, VACban has taken out over 3.2 million profiles, with five of these so-called VAC waves coming in the month of December alone. As you probably know, that's when Counter-Strike Global Operation became free to play. And again, at the time, it was a major deterrent. Getting VAC banned, or some call it an extended vacation, was an overlooming cloud around cheaters, following them wherever they go. But as time went on, cheats became more and more advanced, and the fear of VAC eventually became outdated. Fast forwarding a few years, we land when the esports league was just starting to take roots in the gaming community, but not everything was going as smoothly as it seemed. In Counter-Strike, Global Offensive's pro scene, multiple pros have already been compromised for cheating by Valve's anti-cheat software, and even more were suspected. As one person gets banned, they decide to let their lips slip and na mention more names of more professional players who they think or they feel are also not legit. And this all started when a semi-pro German player named Simon, in-game name is going to be SMN, Beck got banned by the Esports Entertainment Association's tool. Given that he'd clearly slipped past Valve's known anti-asshole Digiwall, this got the Counter-Strike makers curious. Valve reached out and with the information they acquired from ESEA, upgraded their own anti-cheat detection system. This was the first major update to VACnet as a whole since its creation in 2001. But when that happened, suddenly people started getting caught left and right with a very new type of red on their hands. And this isn't blood. Oh no, by Counter-Strike standards, this is much worse. Third-party tools that assisted in players' aim, and in some cases, can be help with very difficult shots. An MLG case you should all know well, involving, I'm gonna butcher this again, Havik Tazamanian, Tazaman, or you all know him as quickly. In a professional match in November 2014, who was a major player for a big-time team, Titan was vac banned for the use of third-party cheats. It's a shame, really. It was a really nice jump shot. Now, I know I left out a lot of information. I left out a lot of specific times VAC got updated, the multiple time VAC waves have been seen in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but I wanted to give you guys more of a rough introduction to the cheating community. VACnet does work. Game banning does work. So what I decided to do was get in contact with a admin for a very popular yet private cheat with only about 700 players using this cheat. And I wanted to see what he said about the entire situation. So let's get that video. So what's the difference between between like rage cheating and legit cheating besides the fact that one of them just has legit in the name? Okay, so rage cheat. Well, you can rage legit cheat as well. That's basically what I do. But rage cheating, you're pretty much just like spinning or you're using like full out anti aim, and you have 180 FOV shooting through walls. And I guess legit cheating would just be the opposite of that, just like trying to shit. And then there's like in between, which is kind of where we are. Uh, we're like semi rage, so like. We have like high FOV bot and stuff like that, and we have legit A. So you your your camera is basically just like, are you in third person when you cheat or? Uh, you can be. You don't have to. like when you're spinning. Like that's one thing people do. They like, how are you playing when you're spinning? Or how do you know what you're doing? You're not. You're in third person the whole time. But we talked about this before. I wanna I wanna bring it up again. You said that when you cheat and you go on matchmaking, you don't play against people like me. You don't play against. Anybody else that watches this video, you play against people with the lowest of the low trust factor. Yeah, we're basically playing new accounts that are, they're all cheating too. Okay, so, so you- Occasionally you get legits, but yeah. <laughs> that sucks if you, that really Not, sucks. Well, yeah, for legit it sucks, but for me it's fun because I just try to beat cheaters, so. So yeah, so what, what is your purpose then? Because I know- I know when people say like, oh, he's the fucking filthy cheater and blah, 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 blah. Do you yes. play, do you choose to play against cheaters or do you choose to play against like normal people for rank? Like, what do you, why do you do it? Is what I'm asking. I, I basically, I cheat to beat other cheaters because that's what I find fun. Is that like a majority opinion or is that just like your opinion? Uh, uh, not really. I think a lot more people are lean towards like closeting, like trying to beat legit rank up but yeah i like go out like hoping that the other team is just full of cheaters so, I so, you, them so you can dick on kids 
Yeah, pretty much. Okay, well, because we talked about Fanta. Oh, how would you rate your cheat? Like, out of 10. One being, like, the fucking aimware free shit. And 10 being, like, like top notch. Like, you got no problem with dealing uh, with anybody. Legit cheat? We're a legit cheat, so... We would, we're probably the top legit cheat. Exclusively legit cheat. You're, you're, that's, a, that's a bold claim. I mean, I've beat every other cheat there. <laughs> The only other cheat that can compete with Fanta is Skeet, but you're using Ragebot on that. Yeah, so. okay, yeah, so you're more, way so. more obvious. Do you, what do you feel about Trust Factor then? What's your, what's your thing on Trust Factor? Like, do you, do you believe Trust Factor even makes a fucking difference? Because so yeah, many so. people, so you do, because so many people have always commented, or at least air quotes, think they know about cheats and go, it doesn't matter. Trust factor doesn't fucking work and blah, blah. I beg to differ. I messaged War Owl and he begs to differ. Um, what do you think from being a cheater? Trust Factor, it definitely does work because I have like 80 banned accounts on my IP and my computer. So every account I get is instantly at the bottom. So like you can tell yeah. the difference. The second, the first game on any account I use, you can tell no loyalty badge, no nothing. All brand new accounts, all cheaters. Yeah. Now you may be thinking to yourself, a, a cheater who only wants to play with other cheaters? Now that's that's strange. I don't normally see that. Everybody on my team is legit. It's only them that is cheating. Well, to be fair, this cheat is private, and each cheater is different depending on what cheat they use, how blatant and obvious they want to be. He said his cheat had about 700 users, with about 100 or 200 being banned for malicious reasons. But even so, that doesn't seem to be like the cheaters that you and I face on a day-to-day -day basis. The ones that rage toggle, spin non-stop, and shoot everybody through the ground with a scout. <laughs> now, I always thought I was just someone who was pushed over the edge and got some shitty cheat to expedite their process of being banned. But upon a closer look, the cheater's profile has a full inventory. Skins, coins, and a thousand hours or so on Counter-Strike, which to me is very weird. You would think someone with 3,000 hours or so on Counter-Strike who would know that the community is toxic. So why go overboard like this and cheat? Well, it may be surprising to you, but here is his view on that. You see the, uh, what I sent you about the cracked account? Yeah, I mentioned that in my video. I, I mentioned yeah. that, uh, somebody, we were just talking about it today, and it was somebody that didn't have, that had a few skins. And when I say a few, I mean, like, purples. Like, they had purples yeah. and blues and stuff like that, but they had a skin for every single weapon. And I was like, this dude is spin spinning. So he's either had <laughs> this a profile for a very long time and is just never cheated before today, or this account is not his. I even met, I, I literally addressed it. I'll link you today's video when I upload it, but I'm yeah, serious. I'm serious. Like, this guy, I'm like, this guy's got skins. Like, not just like some skins or whatever it is. I'm talking about like a lot. Like, he had one for everything. I have this add on on Chrome, which I suggest everybody gets. Um, it's called oh, yeah. Band Checker for Steam. I don't know if you've heard about that. <laughs> if he, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I went into mine, probably the last hundred players that I played against, I'd say probably like half are banned by so, now. So right now it's going through. It's at a hundred and four of my matches. Um, and I'm gonna check the matches for bands. Now I remember that. How do you how do you feel that Trust Factor works? I it's definitely uh, by IP and computer. You think it's by IP? Yeah. See, I or, feel like I, there's a there's a bunch of different things, but I know IP is definitely one of them. I feel like oh people that God. have a good understanding of how it works and how VACnet works, because in my opinion, Steam is is made by Valve, okay, and Valve also made Counter Strike, okay. So on a game like Counter Strike, I feel like the reason they didn't really implement a real ban system besides Overwatch is because. If you cheat in any other game and get reported on your profile, it goes to Valve, which lowers your trust factor for your account, which just so happens that the only account that, or only game, excuse me, that uses the trust factor is, is CSGO. So if you ever play CSGO, you will always get into shit. Do you believe that or no? I mean, I don't think anybody, like, really knows 100%, but it definitely, it's a possibility. I wouldn't doubt it. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So I'm checking... And I'm checking for right now. Who say, for people who say that Trust doesn't work, that's just like that's not true at all. It definitely does. It makes it it makes it <laughs> so much faster to get banned. That's what I'm saying. I feel like I feel like Trust Factor is something that really does work, and it's it's the people yeah. that really don't know what they're talking about when they say Trust Factor does not separate uh, the communities on HVH servers. And honestly, I had so many people in HVH that were like. Hey, what hack do you use? Hey, how do you do this? Hey, and we're met with like 
a, a good, good re responses. a good response. Yeah, like oh, I use this, and this is what you should check out, and oh, I'll try changing this, and and then again, if you go into like a regular matchmaking game on Counter Strike, yeah, it's, cancer. it's cancer. You know, so yeah. what's your opinion on the community? It's like half and half. HVH servers can be just as cancer. Depends on who's in there. You'll see a lot more uh, like like children like 12 year olds 13 year olds in hvh lobbies because they don't have to spend money on prime accounts stuff like that yeah so it's cheaper for them to do that but yeah. if you go into like normal prime it's mostly going to be you know like 17 to like 20 year olds stuff like that but yeah uh the community it's okay the community's it can be helpful like to new people but it can also be just as toxic as it can be helpful if you guys weren't convinced enough on why you should stay away from third-party logon sites like skin gambling sites, well, that video should have made it clear. From now on, stay away. Now, I know most of you were hoping to see me try Private Cheat Out and how it works, but after seeing firsthand how toxic the cheating community really is and how it really affects your trust factor, I will not be cheating. Let me make that clear. After that interview, I reached out to a few other members of the Counter-Strike community regarding Overwatch, people that have thousands of hours in Counter-Strike, or reached the rank of Global Elite, and have done Overwatch almost every single day. But sadly, I got no response. I did, however, get a short response back from More Owl, who I'm surprised messaged me in the first place. But he mentioned that he isn't quite sure how Trust Factor works either. And at one point, even his Trust Factor was low, and he couldn't tell me why. Have any of you guys been in a game and saw a profile with thousands of hours on Counter-Strike, inventory of skins and badges, getting headshots and popping around the map at lightning fast speeds? Well, would you think he's legit? Even if you were at a high rank and you thought your trust factor was high, that could just be a compromised account. Remember to secure your accounts, change your passwords, and even change your Steam API code from time to time. Valve has been known to reset users' passwords, remove Steam authenticators, and even let people into an account where they don't really have any idea if that was actually theirs to begin with. And once you get locked out of your account, well, you might not want that account back. Ever. Steam accounts can go for as little as $3. And you heard me correctly, 3 bucks. 3 USD. All your hard work lost to some cheater who just wanted an account to rage on. Now, this leads me to the second part of my video. Trust Factor. Sometime in 2017, Steam rolled out an update that includes something called the Trust Factor System, improving matchmaking with the goal of improving experiences based on each game. Originally, the Trust Factor System matched players who linked Counter-Strike profiles with a unique phone number, and later on, the system additionally required in-game experience. This is when the Rank 21 came into play. Now, as these updates hit CSGO, the Prime status created a hard boundary in the Counter-Strike community, and players who might otherwise be perfectly happy playing together were separated by the Berlin Wall. Valve commented on their blog, We're committed to the goal of getting dedicated CSGO players together, but we've been looking into improved approaches. Over time, Valve began experimenting with matching players using observed behaviors and attributes on their Steam account and how they played, including overall amount of time they've spent playing Counter-Strike, how frequently they were reported for cheating, and even how much time spent playing other games on their Steam account. The results of the Trust Factor system, even though you may say otherwise, have been extremely positive. In the matches created using Trust Factor, Valve stated that most players ended up generating fewer reports regardless of their Prime status. Now you may be thinking to yourself, is Mav, is, is that all? Trust Factor is defined by a, a phone number that you have connected and just not being a dick in game? Really? Well, well, no. No, it's not that simple at all. Trust Factor works on multiple things and is able to place you into a level that it deems appropriate. Things like team damage in game, not connecting a phone number to your account, chat spam, in game reports, and profile reports. But it doesn't stop there. How many times do you use a Steam Market, guys? How often are you on your profile? How many other games do you play other than CSGO? And some people will even go as far as saying that Valve is always collecting data. Now, this is not necessarily IP information, but it's what you do on your PC. And I've come to find that there's a lot of supporting evidence on this. And, and let me explain before you already hit that thumbs down button. According to the multiple, multiple articles regarding Trust Factor that I have found, this one is the most well-written of the bunch, so here I'll be paraphrasing a lot. 
don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the actual link in the description of the video. The question starts with how does Valve get personal information to know it's a hacker using a new account? Well, Valve refuses to invade users' information. They've mentioned this multiple times in each of their privacy acts. However, they have mentioned that they can use information provided by a user to assist them. First, Steam collects an email, country of residence, payment information on any purchases, IP address through cookies, and browser and device information. Now, I'm going to be putting air quotes around that sentence all damn day. Remember that. So, none of this information is obtained by invading the user's privacy, but instead is fairly given by using their services. So, just through Steam alone, Valve can obtain plenty of information to help personally identify users, allowing the Trust Factor system to be functional. Valve clarifies that Steam collects its email and country of residence when a user creates a Steam account. This is written right in their privacy statement. So you might be thinking now, well, Mav, I use a throwaway email. They can't collect that info. Well, users can try and create a new email, but any emails on a throwaway email site would be easily detected and Valve to realize. Country of residence, however, ties the users to a region which locates the user to a single country. Malicious users can easily spoof this through a VPN. However, the user has to always use the VPN or else it's easy to detect that the location of the user's residence is a spoof. Since Steam uses cookies for IP information, users can be recognized through browsers as well. A new user can play Counter-Strike for free, but buying things on the Steam Marketplace will certainly help a user's trust factor and personally identify the user to the person that purchased goods for the account. It's also easy to recognize that the game is gifted by who it was gifted from and the user's phone number if they decide not to pay for CSGO. All of this is without mentioning the last point that Valve collects, which is the most powerful of all. Technically, Valve does do a form of hardware identification, or HWID, even though everyone believes they don't. So no, Valve doesn't invade users' PC while playing Counter-Strike for hardware IDs and bases bans off it. However, the Steam hardware surveys that Valve sends out is them identifying Steam users' machines. Now these surveys are publicly posted with the users accepting and being anonymous. So what does this have to do with Valve checking for hardware and browser information? Well, Valve being allowed to check users' hardware and browser information accessing Steam is part of the privacy agreement creating a Steam account. So on top of a constant VPN to avoid user identification, a malicious user would also have to spoof all of their hardware. Well, all that being said, Trust Factor seems to work in the background, constantly collecting information on a user and adjusting their Trust Factor as such. Well, for all those who are still with me here at this part of the video, I would now like to talk to you guys about the most important thing I have found to date. And this is how to raise your Trust Factor. I've kind of taken the time and broken it down to seven simple steps on how to avoid lowering your trust factor, but how to slowly regain trust factor over time. Step one, try buying this stuff from Steam and Steam Marketplace. This shows that you're willing to spend at least some trivial amount of money in your profile, meaning, hey, Valve, why would I cheat when I spend money on Counter-Strike and spend money on other games? Clearly I'm innocent. You may think this is trivial and petty, but it does work. Step 2. Don't be a toxic asshat in other games. Steam is run by Valve. Valve also runs Counter-Strike. For someone to say that Valve doesn't take into consideration the other profile reports that you've got on your Steam profile through other games, well, they're probably stupid. N not, not really. Don't quote me on that. Step number three, please, for the love of God, do not use a throwaway email address or use a VPN while creating a profile. You are not smarter than Steam. You are not smarter than Valve. They know what you're doing and they're gonna adjust your trust factor as necessary. Step number four. Now, this won't apply to you guys if you're not a constant cheater, but please do not constantly visit sites that have third party cheats. And you know what I mean. Steam takes this as a, I'm going to cheat later on, I just haven't gotten around to it. And we'll store cookies and adjust your trust factor as necessary. So please, if you're not gonna cheat, just stay off these sites. Step number five, link your goddamn phone. This is the simplest and easiest way to greatly improve your trust factor. No other explanation is needed. Step number six, queue only with people who have high or decent trust factor. Now, if you don't have any friends on your friends list who have high or decent trust factor, that's probably a problem, and that's probably why you have low trust factor to begin with. 
So to get around that, try solo queuing. Yes, it's going to be difficult for a time, but over time, you will see a slow and slight improvement to your trust factor. And finally, step number seven. You need to understand that trust factor works like credit for a credit card company. If you miss a payment, your credit score plummets. And this is the exact same with trust factor. Queue with cheaters, use fake emails or VPNs to sign up, or just being outright toxic in other games will definitely hurt. Sometimes hurt a lot. It's better to never miss a payment and keep that trust factor high rather than screw up and have to claw your way up from the depths of hell again. Well guys, I wish I had more information for you, I really do, but I thoroughly enjoyed making this and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope you learned something from this video. I want to give a quick shout out to all those who supplied me with information on cheating or trust factor. I also want to say thank you to uh, anything for nude who came to my rescue for uh, some editing and made this video actually possible. I'll leave a link to his profile down below. I also want to say thank you to those who did get in contact with me. I want to say thank you to one of the admins from Fanta, a cheat. I want to say thank you to War Owl as well for, even as minimalistic as it was, definitely giving me his input on how he thought Trust Factor played out. But if you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know. Go ahead and leave a comment below, or just thumbs up the video and subscribe to help me out. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you later.